This is a video for section 8 of module 4 using formulas and some algebra involved with those formulas. Alright, so what we're doing in, in the beginning here is we're taking some very basic um, formulas and it's, it's sometimes it'll tell you what it's the formula for and you're just uh, plugging these numbers in there. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take um, what the information it gives me. It says that S is 68, so I'm going to put a 68 here where the S was. And it's telling me that L was 7, so there's an L right there. So beside that 4 is a 7. Right, and then W is 2, so there's a W right there. Plugging in a 2 there. And then over here there's another W beside that 2. So putting in the 2 there, and then H. Alright, and they don't tell us what H is because that's the unknown value or the unknown variable. So we're solving for the H here. So just do a little bit of of arithmetic. So 4 times 7 is 28 times 2 is 56 plus 2 times 2 is 4H. Alright, and now this looks like a problem we saw in the last couple modules where we got to isolate this H right here. So we're trying to solve for this so we need to get it by itself. All right. Now, if you're still having trouble with that from a couple sections ago, go back and review those notes. But what I basically said is this is a constant. This is a constant. This has got the variable term, right? And then there is our equal sign. And remember, we always want a variable on one side, just a constant on the other. On this side, I've got both. So I need to eliminate the constant. So that means I need to subtract this 56 from both sides. So minus 56 minus 56 that's gone on the right like we wanted so I'm left with 4 H's is equal to 68 minus 56 is 12. All right, we don't want 4 H's we want 1 H so we divide by 4 because 4 divided by 4 is 1 and if we do it on the right we do it on the left. So 12 divided by 4 is 3 so therefore H in this case is 3. All right, the same same exact problem. Uh, I didn't include the instructions here. But same exact problem, uh, type of problem, except we have a different formula, and we're putting in everything we know. A is oops, A is 102, so we're going to put in 102 where the A was, all right, which is on the left side of the equals, and then there was the one half. Uh, little h, we're not told. That's what we're going to solve for. All right, big B was 10 plus little b was 7. All right, so that's the problem we have. I'm going to write this as 102 equals 1 half, and I'm just going to go ahead and add the 10 and the 7 and get 17. Okay, now we want to isolate the H. This is what we're trying to isolate right here. So we need to get rid of all the other stuff. So what's being done to it? Now, you don't have to do this if you can see it. Um, you don't have to do this, but what I like to do is is analyze the side with the variable. So there's the H. If I plugged in a number in there, if I plugged in a 1 or a 3 or a 9, whatever, ask yourself what gets done to that number. So if I plug in a number here, the first thing that I would do, more than likely, is multiply it by this 1 half. So I'm going to write that over here. Multiply by a half. All right, and then the second thing, what would I do after that? I'd multiply by 17. Okay, now when we isolate a variable, when we get it by itself, we have to undo these things. So the way you do it is you do the order in the opposite order. So whatever was last comes first, and then you work your way back up to the original. There are only two steps here. So the second step will become the first step. The first step will become the second step. And not only that, you also do the inverse operation of these things. So if this says multiply, the inverse of multiplication is division. So we're going to divide by 17. All right, and then we're going to divide by half. But remember, dividing by a fraction 
that's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So multiply by 2 over 1, which is the same thing as multiplying by just 2. Okay, so I'm going to divide both sides by 17. Alright, so 17 goes into 17 uh, one time and it's gone. Right side I got 1 half times h. 17 goes into 102, 6, and then the next step, I've got this done now, I divide it by 17. The next step, divide by that half, or remember because of fractions, multiply by 2. So now I'm going to multiply both sides of this thing by 2, and multiplying a 2 by a half, they cancel, and you're left with h equals 12. Alright, just flip that around. Right, you can put the H on the right and flip it around, but um, that's the the idea of the inverse operation. Now you don't have to do this if you, you can just tell from from this step right here to divide by 17, multiply by a half, or divide by a half, multiply by two. That's fine. Just go through the problem. But if you need to do this step, uh, you just analyze. Your, here's the variable. What's being done to it? Write down the stuff that's being done. All right. I'm just writing over here, this is what's being done to little h. So this is how we undo it. Okay. Inverse operation in the opposite order. Alright, same thing here. They want us to solve for the r um, if we know the circumference is 50.2. So 50 point two equals two pi times r. Alright, they want us to solve this for r. So technically um, this whole thing, two pi, is what we're dividing or multiplying r by. So first I would if I'm analyzing it like I did in the last problem, I'm saying I multiply r by two pi to get this is my variable. If I plugged in a number here, how do I get the other side? I multiply by 2 pi. So if I, again, if I'm doing inverse operation, there's only one operation here, I need to divide by 2 pi. Okay, well what they tell us to do here, if I divide by 2 pi, divide by 2 pi, that's gone and I get r equals. Well 50 divided by, or 50.2 divided by 2 pi is not um, as pi, as still using pi, it's not doable. So what I need to do is figure out what 2 times 3.14 is. They tell us to use 3.14. So 2 times 3.14, that's the denominator, 6.28. So 50.2 divided by 6.28 is approximately what r is. Okay, because this is approximately the circumference. So then I do this division, but what I'm doing is I'm saying 2 pi is approximately 2 times 3.14, oops, 3.14, which is equal to 6.28. So that's that's where this 6.28 is coming from over here. All right, and then I go to my calculator again and do that division. So 50.2 divided by 6.28 gives me this thing. They tell you to round uh, uh, the nearest tenth, so the nearest tenth would be 8.0 for R. Alright, so that's how you would approach that problem. You need to figure out what 2 times pi or 2 times 3.14 is so you'll know what to divide by here. Now, if you try to do it on your calculator like um, Fifty. If you if you have a calculator like a TI calculator that can do um, multiple operations, if you did this, all right, be careful because that's not going to give you the right number. What that's doing is dividing 50.2 by 2 and then multiplying by 3.14. Okay, so if you're trying to do um, both operations at the same time dividing by 2 times 3.14 remember you would need parentheses because the order of operation says do it left to right so it's going to do the division first 
where we actually need it to do the multiplication first here. Okay, so make sure that you put the parentheses in there if you're trying to do multiple operations. Sorry, I didn't uh, see what I was supposed to do here. I'm supposed to solve for h. So there's the h. Okay, so f is equal to 13 times g times h. I'm going to put the little multiplication things in there to s to uh, so we can see what we're supposed to do. But um, the h that we're solving for again, just like pr previously, is being multiplied by 13 and g. All right, both of these things are being multiplied by the h because there's no plus signs or minus signs in there. It's just all multiplication. So the um, associated property says I can put the parentheses around whomever I want, whichever two uh, numbers or expressions that I want. So I'm going to say that we're multiplying h by 13 times g. Alright, so again, there's no other operations. So that means to get it by itself or to undo it, I have to divide by 13g. Alright, and if I divide both sides of this by 13g, whatever I do to the right, I have to do to the left. Alright, gone on the right, and I get h, it's the only thing left on the right, equals f divided by 13g. Alright, and then there is my answer. Alright, now the next problem, this is something that we're doing, I mean, very similar. We're solving this expression for k. Alright, so it's the same thing we've been doing, but because of that fraction, I just want to emphasize something a little bit different than what we have, than what we did on this last problem. Yeah, we could group these two together, the number and the variable, and divide both sides by that, and technically it's right, but when, one, when the number part here is a fraction, I'm going to list it out a little bit differently. I'm going to say, if I plug in a number for k, you know, what's the first thing that we do? Well, we'd multiply it by the f, because that f is right there beside it. It's the first thing. So I'm going to say, all right, we multiply by f. All right. And then after I've multiplied by f, I'd multiply by this one fourth. So I'm kind of work my way from the variable over with all with the fact that there's just two multiplications over here. So if it's a fraction, I actually do split it up just so you can see um, why we do things the way we do it. Okay, so because I'm multiplying by by uh, or just two different things on the right, I could group them together like I did the last problem, but because I've got a fraction instead of a whole number, I'm splitting it up into two different things. Okay, now flip the order. So 2 becomes 1. Instead of multiply by a fourth, we divide by a fourth. But because we're dividing by a fraction, remember that means we multiply by the reciprocal. And the reciprocal of 1 fourth is 4 over 1. All right. But then remember 4 over 1 is the same as 4. So I would just write multiply by 4. All right, and then uh, that's that step done, and then we go back up, multiply by f. That means we're going to divide by f. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do to this equation is divide by a fourth, or or again, that just means multiply by four. So I'm going to multiply on the left by four, and when I multiply on the right by four, okay, notice again this was the original right side this was the original left side and they're equal okay so what's in yellow is the same all right I'm just multiplying on the left and right by four I'm keeping the equal sign true by doing the same thing on both sides all right and remember what's going to happen here is this one fourth and four are going to cancel and so I've got 4d is equal to these go away just fk remains Alright, so I've got that step done. I divided by a fourth. Now, 
divide by f get rid of this because we want k by itself so I get rid of f by dividing because it's being multiplied so f is gone and the only thing that's left over here now is k which is what we wanted and then 4d over f is what's left on the left side so there's what k equals 4d divided by f in that fractional form alright for the purpose of purchasing new baseboard and carpet baseboard means like that flooring stuff that you put along the wall alright and then carpet obviously you know what carpet is but find the area and perimeter of the room neg neglecting the doors so this is a rectangular room so the area of a rectangle is length times width so area equals 12 feet by 9 feet alright 12 times 10 would be 120 120 minus 12 is 108 so 108 square feet alright don't forget that area units are square units alright and then the perimeter alright remember that means the distance around so 12 9 12 9 okay and it says neglecting doors so assume that you would put a baseboard around here or, or you know don't worry about the fact there's a door there you know we're not measuring the door and cutting out that baseboard so that means we'd have 12 plus 9 plus another 12 plus another 9 or some of you who may know the formula it's 2 times 12 plus 2 times 9 2 times the length plus 2 times the width but anyway that's where those 2's come from is there's two 12's there's two 9's alright and then if you add this together this is 24 plus 18 which is 42 feet All right, and then B, identify where the baseboard has to do with area, perimeter, and the same with carpet. All right, baseboard is the distance, or would be going around the room on the bottom of the wall. So that has to do with perimeter. And then the carpet has to do with the area. Okay, that's what it's asking for on there, on the second question. All right, um, problem like this sometimes a picture helps picture is worth a thousand words so uh, if you need to help draw the picture so a flower bed is in the shape of a triangle with one side twice the length of the shortest side and the third side is 16 uh, more than the length of the shortest side so one side is twice the length of the shortest side and then another side is 16 more twice the length of the shortest side. So this is kind of like what we were talking about in the last chapter. Everything's talking about the shortest side. We don't know anything about the shortest side. So that's what we're going to let x be. Alright, and then one side is twice the length of the shortest side. That means one side is twice x. So one side is 2x. Alright, and the third side is 16 feet more than plus the length of the shortest side. So that's x, so 16 plus x. Find the dimensions if the perimeter is 144 feet. So if we call this the shortest side, if we call this twice that, and then if we say this is 16 plus x, then this is our three sides, and perimeter is distance around. So that's the sum of these three sides. So just starting with one, I'm going to start here with x, and then I'm just going to make my way around until I'm back to x. So I'm starting with x. x plus the next one's 2x and then the next one is 16 plus x. There's my three sides and because that's the perimeter they sum to 144 feet. Alright and then just combine your like terms. Now it's a problem like we've been studying. x and 2x is 3x plus one more x is 4x plus 16 Alright, I just combine my like terms on the left. Equals 144. Solve it for x. So I'm going to subtract away the 16. Get 4x equals 128. Alright, and then divide both sides by 4. 
We don't want 4x's, we want 1x. So x equals 4 goes into 12 3 times, 4 goes into 8 2 times. Alright, so that's 32 feet. Alright, and that's x, but they want the dimensions. They want all three sides. So x is 32, 2x would be twice 32 because x is 32. 2 times 32 is 64 feet. Alright, that's another side length. Alright, and then 16 more than that is 16 plus x would be 16 plus 32. Alright, and then 16 plus 32 is 48 feet. Alright, and that's my three side lengths. I can check that, confirm that that's correct if I just add those three together. And I get 32 plus 64 plus 48 adds up to 144, which is what it says it should add to. Alright, a cat is a high-speed catamaran auto ferry that operates between these two cities, okay, and the cat can make the trip in about one and a half hours going a speed of 51 miles per hour. How far apart are the two cities? Well, this is distance equals rate times time. Alright, this is a distance equals rate times time type of problem. Distance measured in feet, miles, yards, meters, whatever. Rates are rates of speed for these types of problems like miles per hour, feet per second, meters per second, kilometers an hour, that kind of thing. And then time are obviously units of time. Uh, hours, minutes, seconds. So plug in what we know. Hours, that's going to go in where the T is. Speed of 51 miles per hour, that's going to be our R. And what are we looking for? How far apart? That means we don't know D. So D is equal to R, which is 51, times T is 1.5. I'm going to write it as 1.5. All right, and then go to a calculator. You'll have a calculator in the computer uh, start menu if you uh, don't have one uh, on your phone or are available to you. So 51 times 1.5, 76.5. All right, now uh, it'll have your units in the box, but just know that this is miles per hour, this is hours. Multiply those together, you get miles. So that's our distance is miles. All right, Dolbear's Law states the relationship between the rate at which these tree crickets chirp and their uh, air temperature and the environment. The formula is this, where T is the temperature in degrees, okay, and then N is the uh, number of chirps per minute. So they're giving us what value for T is. T is 58, so there's T, so that's 58. Find the number of chirps in a minute. Let's find that rate of N. So just set it up, 58 is where the T was, equals 50 plus N minus 40 over 4. All right, this is what we're wanting to isolate. We need to get our, our make our way to that. Now, again, if you have trouble doing that process, getting this variable isolated, do a quick analysis at the beginning of what needs to be done to get you there. So the first thing you go through is if I plugged in a number here for N, what would I do first? Well, the first thing I would do if I plugged in a number is I would subtract 40. All right, and after I subtract 40, then what do I do? Divide by 4. All right, and then after I divide by 4, the last thing over here on the right side is add 50. All right, so that means that if I want to undo this stuff to get the n by itself, I have to do this in the reverse order. So 3 becomes 1, 2 stays 2, but 1 becomes 3. All right, I'm working from here back. And instead of add, I subtract 50. Instead of divide by 4, I'm going to multiply by 4. 
And instead of subtract 40, I'm going to add 40. All right, I'm just working through the order of operations backwards to get back to the variable. All right, so I need to do this first, subtract 50. So if I subtract 50, it's going to get rid of that 50 there on the right side. And I'm making my way back towards the end. All right, 58 minus 50 is 8. So that's done. Now multiply by 4. There's division by 4 over here. If I multiply by 4, it'll get rid of that division. Okay, but if I do it to the right, I have to do it to the left also. So I'm going to multiply by 4 on the left as well. 4 times 8 is 32. There's nothing left down here, so I just left with n minus 40. All right, and now that step's done. And finally, add 40. We want n by itself, so we add 40. Add 40. So n is equal to 32 plus 40 is 72. All right, 72 what? Chirps per minute. So chirps per minute. Here's my answer. All right, this lawn is in the shape of a trapezoid. Trapezoid just means you have ob uh, one pair of opposite sides parallel with a height of 40 feet, all right, and bases of 80 and 120. All right, how many bags of fertilizer must be purchased to cover the lawn if each bag covers 3,000 square feet? Okay, so this is the area formula that we need. H is this height right here, all right. Uh, big B, little b. Big B is usually the longer side. Little b is the shorter side. But it really doesn't matter because you're adding and you can flip the order. So as long as you have H as this perpendicular height, it really doesn't matter which B you call which. Okay, so first thing we need to do is figure out what the area of this trapezoid is so we know how much fertilizer we need to buy. So A equals 1 half, right, from this. H is 40. And then the parentheses, big B is 120 plus little b is 80. So now it's just order of operations from here. A equals 1 half times 40. Parentheses do, we have to do first, so uh, 120 plus 80 is 200. And then the only other operations are multiplication. We can multiply in any order we want to, but you know, we got this fraction out here, it's easiest just to multiply left to right. So one half of 40 is 20 times 200. Quick way to multiply numbers when there's lots of zeros like this, just count how many zeros you have. So we got three zeros. And then just multiply the numbers. Two and two is four. But of course you got a calculator, so it's not that bad. Okay, so that's uh, area. So this is square feet. Okay, and then this says uh, how many bags of fertilizers must be purchased to cover each bag covers 3,000 square feet. Okay, I got 4,000. If I buy one bag, I don't have enough. If I buy two bags, I got too much, but I have to cover the whole lawn, so I'm going to need two bags. All right, and the quick way to do that, if you don't get a number that you can look at that and see, uh, by eyeballing it is you just divide whatever number you get here. And your answer, divide that by the coverage of the bag, so 3,000, and then just round up to the next uh, whole number. So even though this would round to 1, we would still round up to the 1.3 uh, 1 all the way up to 2 because we've got to cover the whole thing. So 1 wouldn't do it, so we go to the next whole number. All right, uh, another distance rate times time problem. How long does it take uh, Luis Camilla to drive 495 miles on this interstate and drives nonstop and t uh, with his cruise control set on 55 miles per hour? Okay. Now they're giving you something like this at 3 p.m. doesn't matter. I-30, I-30, you know, that doesn't matter. What matters is that you know what goes where here. Okay. He's driving 495 miles. That's a distance. Okay. His speed is 55 miles per hour. That's a rate. So plug in, this is 495 equals R is 55. So 55 times T, 
All right, I'm multiplying by 55, so to, to uh, solve it, I need to divide by 55. All right, and then we divide 495 by 55, and I get 9. So T equals 9, and again, miles, miles per hour, so this is T equals 9 hours. All right, and then last type of problem, you'll have to do conversion between these back and forth. All right, um, conversions between Celsius and Fahrenheit, you can do them both with this, but they do give you another one if you're converting from uh, Fahrenheit to Celsius, where you can plug in, uh, you know, either way. But this one that says negative 13 degrees Fahrenheit to Celsius. Well, normally we'd want the other formula for this particular one, the other version of this formula, but we don't have to have it. We can use this one. So we're going to plug in a negative 13 there where the F is. All right, and again, I'm solving for C. So what's being done to C? Again, if we need to do an analysis, it's being multiplied by 9 fifths. If I start plugging in numbers, how would I work through this right side. I'd multiply by 9 fifths first and then after I did that I'd add 32. Okay well I'm not working through that side I'm solving for that variable so I need to flip the order and do opposite operations. So instead of add 32 I'm going to subtract 32. Instead of multiply by 9 fifths I'm going to divide by 9 fifths but once again, remember, dividing by a fraction is the same thing as multiplying by the fraction's reciprocal. So I'm going to multiply by 5 ninths. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is subtract 32. So 9 fifths C equals, subtracting over here, same sign. So remember, we keep the sign and add the two numbers. So 3 and 2 is 5, 1 and 3 is 4. Okay, so 9 fifths, the number I'm looking for is equal to negative 45. How do I get rid of that after I've done this step? I multiply by 5 ninths. So I'm going to multiply on the right by 5 ninths. All right, everything goes away like we want. We want 1c and that's what happens over here. We just get 1c this side had a negative 45 okay and we multiplied by 5 ninths so I need to multiply on the right side by 5 ninths okay now just recall the way that we can do this we can change negative 45 into negative 45 over 1 All right, and then 9 goes into 45 5 times 5 times 5 is negative 25 all right, so we're left with a C equals, this ended up being negative 25. So C equals negative 25. All right, and then that's degrees Celsius. I guess we don't need that C since we got a C right there. All right, but anyway, that's the idea on this problem. All right, email me if you have any questions.